coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. Mm. And apparently dogs can s- smell or sense that if you have something wrong with you, like that yeah. they, they act weird or whatever. Yeah. Ever um, since getting COVID, I've had dogs all around my house. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, barking at night is brutal. They can't tell if you have a problem with your bones, but a cat scan? <laughs> yeah. Dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We're a podcast that every week we choose a popular saying, take an admittedly shallow, hopefully comedic, once in a while interesting, if we're really lucky, educational dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but mostly we're going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on my name is Jurassic Mark. I'm Skitty. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Still getting over the Roros a bit? Uh, yeah, still fighting it, man. It's been more than a week, more than two weeks, more than... Three weeks now. Three weeks. Yeah, but fortunately it's not. Right. Allegedly. But <laughs> oh, we'll fortunately, it's not COVID. Is that what you're going to yeah. say? Oh, yeah, got it. No, it's not. I've tested. I've tested. I am. Uh, it's, it's. This must be what uh, the ladies or men <laughs> feel like when they take a pregnancy test. I like you said it. <laughs> the ladies. Okay. Just. Because it's like you're waiting for that pink line to appear to see, <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I expecting? Yeah, we're going to have a COVID. <laughs> so exciting. Big announcement, everybody. Two pink lines. Should I like burst a balloon, but that's got spikes all over it? <laughs> yeah. Virus reveal. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, uh, what's, what's that's his name? He's, um... Like African American comedian who does Mr. T does short Denzel Washington does short comedy like more like in the Vine kind of vein of things. Kevin Kevin uh, oh, man, what's his name? He's is pretty a, short. He's hilarious. Anyways, he does a, a sketch on the little gender reveal with the cup with a uh, couple is is two white friends. It's like you know this is so and so and so. It's like I just love him so much and and. Uh, you know, I just I'm here to you know celebrate with with you guys, and I've known you, you know uh, Sheila for like a really long time, and I'm just so supportive and excited about you guys having this baby. And it's like, okay, gender reveal. There's like presents and cake and people in the crowd, and they snap this like flare to be like pink smoke or blue smoke, but it's black smoke. <laughs> Is it a skit or does he it's do this a, as a, a prank? Skit. No, it's a skit. Oh, that's it's, great. It's a, it's, a, it's a sketch comedy. Oh, what's his name? It's going to bug me now. But anyways, he's hilarious. But yeah, so the black smoke comes up and then so the camera like, you know, like looks at her and then her her, her husband and then looks over to him. He's just kind of got his face turned <laughs> like just sipping the soda like, oh, oh. Yeah, this is amazing. That's but funny. You're talking about you a have gen- to tell me his name. A gender re- reveal, the, the virus reveal party. The virus reveal party. Yeah. Unveiling. <laughs> or like Maury Povich. I have tuberculosis. <laughs> Maury, Maury, Maury Povich type thing. You have coronavirus. <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 the crowd's like, oh. You have anthrax or whatever. Uh, that's funny. You have- I when I first got sick, I actually texted my mother in law. Uh, she works in the office with me sometimes. I'm like, I'm not coming in today. I have tuberculosis. I'm really feeling it. She calls me immediately. She's like, What? She was actually, You have what? I'm like, <laughs> I thought that was I thought, an old timey. Yeah, I thought that'd be obviously thanks not to real. Doc Holiday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But she's like, Oh my goodness, I was really worried for you. She's like, I was already Googling it. <laughs> what to do with a chicken soup does not fix. It's okay. Laughter. Laughter. The, the legitimate uh, children. If you're in the depths of sickness out there <laughs> and you're just like, man, I got to get better soon. They say laughter is the best medicine. So we have a few podcasts uh, that aren't this one that we'd like to encourage. One is called <laughs> laughter is the best medicine. There, there you go. I'm pretty sure. Uh Speaking of laughter, to introduce today's idiom is none other than, I wish I could remember her real name, but Alice from the Brady Bunch, giving us today's... Something about B. Davis? They make no bones about it. I think it is, actually. I'm just like, my mind flashed through to the Brady Bunch grid. The oh, whole, yeah. The three by three. Oh, oh, the actual... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who and, played... Let's find out. Who played Alice in the Brady Bunch? Wonderland. Mm-hmm. 
if you're if you're close, I'll be so impressed. Wow. What is it? Ann B. Davis. <laughs> that is impressive. Yes. It's crazy what's locked in the old. Oh, that's her now. Yeah, wouldn't recognize her. Oh no, she's been dead since 2014. Oh, that's so, her in 2014. Well, that's her in 2015. This is not the land of the living episode. <laughs> no, it's but what not. episode is it actually? She just said it. She did. What'd she say? She said, "Make no bones about no it." No bones about it. Got Anne my B. Davis. skull and crossbones hat on. Make no bones about it is today's idiom. Fantastic. No bones about it. No, basically, how do you use it? Do you use it? Wow, well, make no. I think bones I. About it. I think I say that a lot in these episodes. How do you use this idiom? Do you use it? Um, I would use mistake. Like make make no mistake. I wouldn't. I don't know if I use this idiom, but I know what this idiom means. So. I feel like I Make hear no it all it. the time, but I did come across in research, which we'll get to the origins in a little bit here, that it several sites called it archaic, not used anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'm like, that's not true. I have some thoughts on like so one of the my my little side hustle for three and a half hours a week. I work at a game store. Okay, and so it um, there are multiple games that involve dice that have the usage of dice as bones. Yeah. Yeah, and so like there in my mind, don't no, wreck the origins here. Is it an actual origin? Maybe. Okay. Well, I, I won't. I won't continue. But yeah, the u- usage of of dice and 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 bones. Throw them bones. Throw them bones. You know, um, dogs like because they're famous. Like you know, the dog burying its bone. Yeah. Kind of thing, but. Um, and apparently dogs can s- smell or sense that if you have something wrong with you, like that yeah. they, they act weird or whatever. Yeah. Ever um, since getting COVID, I've had dogs all around my house. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> like, barking at night is brutal. They can't tell if you have a problem with your bones, but a cat scan. <laughs> yeah. Which is no. that. So you're using the wrong pet to determine. I hate bones. when I don't see them coming at all. <laughs> I don't, you know, you did a joke about dogs and cats, and I didn't even see you fishing for. <laughs> you see that I threw fish in, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Uh, that's funny, but it is true that dogs can do that, I right? I heard that animals can tell when like earthquakes are happening, or but that uh, a dog can sense like illness or something. I don't know. Who knows? Wives' tale. Oh, I was waiting for the the next punchline. No, it's going to be like <laughs> something to do with seismology or something. No. Dogs can't feel an earthquake coming, but a cat scan. <laughs> size matters. I don't know. I don't know where you were going with it. <laughs> I'm just red talking. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing real new there. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. Make no bones about it. It, uh, it, it, it. I've definitely heard it said. So I was surprised to see that archaic no longer in use. Um, but it does mean like make no mistake about it or. Hear me, this is the truth. Make no bones about it. Actually, what did I write down for? Uh, to say clearly what you think or feel about something, however unpleasant or awkward. To make no bones about something means to say something in a way that leaves no doubt or to have no objection to it. I did come across this saying involving bones. To thrive in life, you need three bones. A wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Hmm. I thought, oh, that's kind of clever. I mean, it depends who you are. You might need a trombone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Trombone. People with a good sense of humor just seem to get along, you know, in life and see the the funny side of things. Having yeah. a backbone, there's times to, you know, uh, w- woman up. Yep. Whatever. Yep. You just gotta eat your take your take your take your medicine. Yep. And then, um, yeah, the, a wishbone, something to kind of set your sights on. You know, I didn't know that you have to let the wishbone dry. So if you've ever like had turkey dinner and you're like, oh, there's the wishbone, let's mm-hmm. do it. It's, it's unlikely it's going to break. You kind of got to let it sit out for a while. I think if you put, apply a force to it. Yeah. Just mathematically. Yeah, if you use the force. <laughs> mathematically, if you apply a force to any bone, it'll break. I think it just kind of bends. You think it's like a cartilage type thing? Yeah, well, it's not cartilage, but it's, well, it's supple a, enough. Hmm. Or at least my one time that I... Picked a raw wishbone out of a living turkey. <laughs> like you went full Mortal Kombat on it? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Reached in. Oh, I to make a wish. <laughs> want to make a wish. <laughs> that seems like a, something that could be done in some sort of villain movie. Like where you could 
pull a wishbone out of a person that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I was going to talk about this in the last episode when we were talking about uh, uh, being uh, in the land of the living. I've been walk- watching through the Expendables movies. Oh, dear. So speaking of like one-liners. Yeah. Like talking about ha- Have you living. seen these movies? Yeah, oh, I've seen a couple of them. But so, I think, was it on five now or six or something? There's three out. I think there's four on the way. Number four is on the way. Yeah, I've seen, so I've seen a couple. And I was blown away. There's a reason it's called The Expendables. Yeah. So, But here's the thing. Like, like we have some extra film. They're making fun of themselves, clearly. Yeah, yes. And so I had no interest in watching it at all. I watched a documentary on Sly Stallone and then another one the same week on Arnold Schwarzenegger. And our Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking highly because they used to have quite the feud in their Hollywood I've heard this. action mm-hmm. days. And they both admitted, like, yeah, we were out to get each other. If, yeah. if he came out with this in his movie, my this was bigger in my next movie. Sure. And they just, like, feuded each other. Um, but Schwarzenegger was like, he goes, name another actor who has three franchises with that kind of success. And I'm like, three? I was like, Rambo, Rocky, what, what else is there? And then, and then they mentioned Expendables. I'm like, oh, I've never seen any Expendables. So I've been just this week watching through Expendables. So honestly, they're terrible. Yeah, they are terrible. Like they're they're so bad. Like yeah. the the writing is Dolph pointless. Dolph Lundgren, Jason Statham, but out there. the cast. I am so digging these movies, <laughs> Dude, and it just I mean retro here, for you. So here's spoiler alert for everybody: if you haven't seen them and you want to, don't listen. No, to people them. will be rushing out to see the Expendables now. Well, I hope so because it's worth it. Because you watch the first one, and it's kind of what you expect because it's in all the ads, right? You know who's going to be in the movie, right? Um, and then Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger make this like blip appearance in the first movie, and uh, but it's got you know Jet Li, Dolph Lundgren, Mickey Rourke, Jet Schwarzenegger. Lee. Uh, an MMA guy, I can't think of his name, uh, Steve Austin. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, that's great. That's a dumb movie, but I enjoyed that. Then they go to the second movie. Is George St. Pierre? Uh, I, I honestly don't know the name. I recognize his face, mm-hmm. but they go to the second movie and they make, the, there's a new there's a new bad guy. It, and it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Perfect. And it's like phenomenal. That's so great. And and this time Bruce Willis and Schwarzenegger actually have Steven real Steven Seagal. Real he, he hasn't shown up yet. I'm waiting. I don't There's know. two people. Well, I'll go through. It. I'm totally spoiling these movies cuz <laughs> yeah. I got so into no, it where no, no. it's like people are clamoring to see these things. <laughs> so you probably reckon people's good time. They're right old now. now. They've been out for a while. You what? should have, you should have gone to see it already. So then the third movie comes along. I'm actually disappointed when they make some big name the bad guy. I'm like, I want Schwarzenegger. I mean, uh Sliced alone to to keep picking up new guys, not killing them off. I'm like, if if it's the experimentals, like Carl. Weathers. So in the second movie, yeah, in this uh, Mr. T, like where's Mr. T? Right. In the second movie, Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis are actually on the team, not just these bit parts like they had in the mm-hmm. first movie. So you're like, yeah, this is awesome. And somebody else new in the second movie that I can't think of right now. Um, oh, and Jason Statham is in all of them. It's like it's just a wicked cast, but terrible movies. Terry Crews is in oh, all of them. That's pretty good. So the third one, the first scene is them busting out new guy or like somebody, and they bust out of this underground prison. Wesley Snipes. So Wesley wow. Snipes joins the team, but then they decide they're he's all too for, old. For I'm ruining. Evasion. I'm ruining all. He says it in the movie. Does he? Like what? Why were you in the hole? Tax evasion. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. There's so many bad lines. Like Schwarzenegger comes in, I'm back. And then another time he says it again, I'll be back. And they're like, you've had too many. I'll be back. It's like, let somebody else. Like, right. And then, you know, they somebody joins the team and Schwarzenegger's like, who's next? Rambo. There's Johnny. So stupid. So then they're like, oh, we need younger blood. So they get, I didn't know all these names. I'd have to look it up. But they hire a young team to join Stallone, okay. including Ronda Rousey. That's that. That's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then that's a few others. I, I didn't. I don't know who they are. And uh, and then all the team comes back in. But Mr. Church, who is played by Bruce Willis, as we all know, Bruce Willis has been ailing. Yeah. So no longer in the movie. So who steps up? Like Stallone's. Like I thought the Church was coming. It's, it's like, me. I've, it's I've re- me. It's Val Kilmer. No, no. It's like I've replaced Church. Harrison Ford. Oh my goodness! And the villain of the third movie, Mel Gibson. 
Okay, that's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm so into these stupid, stupid movies. I'm wow. like, who's next? It's like who old school, is it's next? Just, it's like those old school cameo. Movies. So we haven't seen Steven Seagal. <clears throat> he's not coming. It, probably not. I think he's not all there. Okay. I don't know if he is. Gary B.C. Oh, see, that's great. Who else? That's great. Make no bounds about it. Go see all of the Expendables. I'm now when four comes out, I'm going to the theater. Oh, yeah. It's they've bought me. They've they own me. Uh, well, it's like the Rambo franchise when it started. Um, they got into the space where they had to invent new ways of killing people. <laughs> that's, and they got that's more Expendables. And they got that's more Expendables. and more ridiculous. Remember, uh, it was like okay, uh, like hand grenade into his um, into his like uh, body armor vest and throw him down a hole, or so that he's dangling from a rope and he just like explodes. He in is the, the bomb. Yeah, it's like it, it just gets so ridiculous. Yeah, flayed up like sushi from a helicopter blade or something exactly. insane. You're like, this is ridiculous. So, anyways, I guess you're not watching it for reality. No, it's a very much an escape from reality. I would ter- sooner watch terrible. terrible ways of doing people in than be served some agenda in a movie, served some cause or sure, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me expendables ten. Yeah, instead of here's an opinion based, and now you should be on our team. <laughs> yeah, and at the very end, it's it's like, make no. B- sorry, guys, we shouldn't have shot all these bullets. It's not good for global warming. And you're like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that Greta Thunberg? Uh, AI, whatever, deep fake. No, it sounds awesome. With uh, You should look it up. It's pretty funny of her talking about if you're going to be in war, only use vegan grenades. And she, it's <laughs> like long. like Vegan grenades. It's so funny. Uh, there, there's, uh, Make no we're, bones about we're, it. We're super off topic here. but Make no bones about it. I saw it. an article accrediting a 70-year-old movie as being the best movie to tackle time travel. And so make no bones about it. I am committing... I was going to watch it last night, but I had unexpected guests. I'm going to watch this movie. It's called I'll Never Forget You. It supposedly tackles time travel better than any time travel movie. So I'm like, have you even heard of it? No. That makes me doubt that it's the best time travel movie. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. 1951. I've watched a ton of science fiction. I haven't heard of this. So. Exactly. 1951, black and white. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll come back to you. Make no bones best, about it. Best time <laughs> travel movie ever. Yeah, according to the people who directed it. Well, anyways, um, I got one final fact before we jump into Bones about it. Uh, and this, is, this isn't even amusing. Uh, it's, it's just uh, <laughs> what... like half of the other things. That... <laughs> Welcome to the Village <laughs> Idiom. Now, we're, before we go on to the content, we're going to give you something that's not really amusing. <laughs> it's so Monty Python. And now, something not amusing. <laughs> okay. How, it, but Bones in the Skull. I was like, more, like, I was like what? Okay, bones in the skull. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throw it to guess. Be legitimate children. You can say a number, uh, and then I'll break it in, into different categories, that there is a cranial category, a facial category. So are we and naming your these bones? Or what's we don't have that? to name them, just number. And so cranial, uh, facial, and then your middle ear. Uh, I'm literally feeling my skull. So cranial, there's mm-hmm. like, isn't your... It's all just one bone. I'm going to say one cranial. Okay. Yeah. I'm right? No, it's eight. <laughs> Where? Because they get fused together or whatever. But Oh, that's there's, stupid. There's eight bones. There's but if a, they're fused together, they're one. Well, I don't know. Like if you pick up a nacho all attached. and it's <laughs> stuck to three, that's you, one nacho. So, so if there's a plate, it's like, hey, guys, let's share a nacho. And then you grab that cheesy one at the top. I only grabbed one. Yeah, but they all come. That's one. You can't say you got also, eight chips. That's why you don't have any friends. <laughs> if you took the all nacho right. and all the toppings go with it, and you say, I just took one nacho, guys. There's not very many. Let's just say that there were 50 nachos on this plate. I took one, so I'd like to pay one, 2% of this bill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the answer. All right I'm there. saying is there's not many podcasts that would equate cranial bone structure to nachos. This is, this is the quality. Okay. Those of you... Our members on our Patreon. What, what kind of jerk friend <laughs> takes the nacho with all the toppings dragged along? I'm, I'm like... I mean, I would first say, hey, look, so that everybody turns away. <laughs> so I would look away. Okay. Then I, I take my one I'm nacho. Away. Okay. And then I come back. And, and there's like, dry chips on I'll the I'll just dry... Oh, these are dry <laughs> chips. 
<laughs> Sorry, I thought we paid 20 bucks for uh, the, ma- the macho nacho. <laughs> oh, you've got every topping on your plate. <laughs> I hope you choke on a jalapeno. All right, what's next? Okay, uh, so there's eight cranial bones. Uh, facial bones. Facial bones. So, like, isn't your front of your face, isn't it's that just, just one part of your crane? crane? <laughs> it's just one big facial bone. Yeah, but do you, are we counting all the teeth? No. Okay. And I'll tell you why later. So I'm going to say one facial bone. Okay, it's 15. Where? There is not 15 bones in my face. <laughs> allegedly there this is. This is wrong. Okay, allegedly there like is. When you when you get a skull, it's, yeah. it doesn't fall apart into 30 pieces. I'll, I'll, going back to your nacho theory, I think it speaks for itself. So eight cranial, 15 facial, and six in the middle ear. So 23 bones in See, the skull. See, there's, there's, there's a left ear and there's a right ear. There's not a middle ear. There's three in The middle, middle ear would be like in the center of your brain. <laughs> well, in terms of a vertical positioning, it does have the... You're talking about horizontal. Is your inner ear... Yeah, there's probably little bones in there. Yeah, apparently. So, so I'll guess six for that. T- hey. <laughs> yes. So 29 bones in the head. Oh, man. Which just sounds crazy to me. That's why I thought when I came across it, I'm like, this is so stupid. I, bet, I told you it's not interesting. I bet God did that just to drive the OCD people crazy. Really? Not 30? 29. He's up to 29. Right. That makes sense. Oh, drive me. Can you just throw one more in there? So you're not, you're, you're not symmetrical is, is the gist. Yeah. Where's that? What? Yeah, well, weird. It's must be one center. It's just well, that's. I said in the inner ear. <laughs> in the inner inner ear. Yeah, just one floating bone in the middle. <laughs> well, we should probably find out where this actually comes from. Right. Yeah. Let me give you a quick challenge. I'm going to give you Make three no one word. About it. I'm going to give you three one word potential origin stories. Does okay. "Make No Bones About It" come from one gambling? Two, elephants. Three. Soup. Four. None of the above. Soup is out of left field. <laughs> Thought you'd enjoy all of those. No bones about it. I have to go with gambling because I, I think it might be dice really. Yeah. Dice related. That's my uh, my two cents. But all right. Well, Riddling is a game we play. Wait, we're not at Riddling. We're Origins <laughs> is the, the section that we're doing. I just looked at the time and I'm like, we clearly are at Riddling. Look how much time we've recorded for. It's better be the shortest origin story ever. All right. Well, this expression comes from the 15th century England. If someone wanted to show that they were dissatisfied with something, they would find bones in it. So if I don't like your theory, I'm like, mm, it's got a few bones, and I would tell you so. So it was a reference to finding bones in your soup. No, it's not. Yeah, which was not a pleasant discovery, obviously. So therefore, finding bones was bad. Finding no bones was good. If you found no bones with something, you're able to enjoy your meal. You're able to enjoy your soup. It's like, God, this is great soup. No bones about it. Listen to my theory. So gambling, because uh, <coughs> when I say there's no bones about it, I don't like no gamble here. This is fa- this is what it is, 100. percent No gamble, yeah. no bones. You don't need to roll the dice on this. No, it's no bones about. Were it. Were you tempted by elephants at all? Not at all. With their burying of their own bones. Not, do they? Yeah. Well, how do they do that when they're dead? Never heard of elephant graveyard? No, they don't bury their own. Sorry. Well, that's what you said. <laughs> I mean, their own, like their family, like their family take care comes of, along and take care grave. of your own. Yeah, elephant graveyards. Well, I, dying altogether does not mean your family comes along and buries your bones. <laughs> not dying all. They will carry their deceased bones to one spot. So all elephant bones end up in the same spot. So it's possible. Did you that, not watch The Lion King? That the that the Kiss concert got to your brain, <laughs> and you're on the on the wacky weed right it got now. Got to my twenty nine cranial. <laughs> so, so I understood it more as that they went and died in the same place. No. Not that their family members uh, used their tusks to dig out a six foot deep. Neither. They and, carry and the pushed, bones. Pushed the body into it. From wherever they died, they will a, carry the bones to their designated reverend graveyard. reverend elephant with a little collar on its neck. Reverend, 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 elephant. Irrelevant. Reverend elephant. There's something there. So, hmm. yeah. So that's why Elephant had no had no all right had no well. bones for me. All right. The earliest citation in the Oxford English Dictionary is from a letter written in 1459 Ooh. to a Norfolk uh, Norfolk uh, squire, John Paston the first. Do you really need to put the first if it's it's just John Paston then? 
Anyway, by his chaplain, Friar John Brackley, and it says this. This is this old English that I'll for sure butcher. And fond that time no bone is in the matter. So it, which is normal English. And found that time no bones in the matter. So in uh, Oxford English Dictionary's earliest example, um, that, uh, oh, that's interesting. From the same article, it says the er earliest citation, earliest example, two different quotes. The second quote is from 1548, English translation of Erasmus's paraphrases, which is a, retellings, uh, a retelling of the Gospels. Um, this this particular expression conveys Abraham's willingness to kill his son Isaac without hesitation. It says he made no manier bones ni sticking, but went in hand to offer up his only son Isaac. In other words, he made no sorts of bones at he made no sorts of bones at stabbing, but proceeded to offer up his only son Isaac. So both of those, well, ones in the fourteen hundreds, ones in the fifteen hundreds, um, and that's kind of it. So it's quite ancient. But it came from soup, like, hey, the perfect soup. There was no bones about it. There was no bones in it. And uh, one would argue, um, if I, if, like I said, if I don't like your position on something, I will say I have found bones in your... I could say I have a bone to pick with you. Interesting. That has to come. That has to come from the same thing. Have we, I guess we haven't covered bone to pick. I'm adding that. I'm adding that. <laughs> we might find it comes from the same thing. But bone to pick sounds like you're picking the meat off a bone, and if I have to, if I if I have a bone to pick with you, I don't want to share that last sliver of meat off the bone with you. Like the the one with the the two dogs and slurping the spaghetti, except like a bone. Yeah, and you just kind of like <laughs> gnarl, the last. gnarl your way together. <laughs> uh, one final little tidbit, which is just interesting uh, but different, is there's a uh, and now a, for something slightly interesting. Now for something not amusing. Uh, there's a 19th century phrase that apparently is still heard today. I've never heard it before. It says to make old bones. So not to make no bones, not to make bones, but to make old bones, which means to live to a ripe old age. We probably should have known this for last week when we did Land of the Living or reference Gene Simmons. Um, again, the Oxford English Dictionary early citation for make old bones is from 1872. Um, there's another one I uh, from 1863. Uh, from a journal once a week in serial installment of Mrs. Henry Wood's novel. Uh, and it says, barring getting shot or run over by a railway train, you'll make old bones, you will. <laughs> so you want to make old that bones. You want to live you long. Make old bones. Yeah. Live a long, happy life. Make old bones. Perfect. But uh, make no bones about it. That is the end of the content for our origins section. It sounds sounds great to me. The re I was so heavy, heavy set on, on dice. There is... Plenty of board games that reference uh, dice as bones. Right. And I was uh, looking online for to get dice bones and what that would be. And uh, there is like plenty. Celtic runes on elk bone dyed with blueberries hmm. to make uh, dice. I'm like, that seems like a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd like to see them. And so the usage of bones in like that fortune telly kind of way. So I was convinced it was gambling. Zero percent chance. Well, I threw out a little. It's soup. When you mentioned bones as dice in the lead up, I said, oh, don't get into origins just to kind of plant I, that I was, seed. I was sold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, sinker. I'll do one more shout out to Beetlebat. Uh, when he was younger, still lived at home, he would find creative ways to ask to borrow money from me. And my favorite one, one that kind of stuck over the years, was he sent me a text that said, hey, dad, could you sauce me some bones? <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> right? Isn't that great? It makes you want to lend him money. I know. I did. Yeah, that's a good one. He sauced me some bones. Sauced me some bones. <laughs> that's beautiful. That needs to come back. Yeah, it's pretty great. You should go to the bank. Yeah. Just walk in. Hi there. I'd like to... I'm looking for... Uh, an application uh, uh, to sauce me some bones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, can, we can run it through real quick. Uh, hello, Mr. Batten. How are you today? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. I Perfect. What can we uh, do for you here at the well, bank? Yeah, I don't know if I need to fill out an application or if this mm. is something I should have done online. What but kind of thing are you looking for? Well, I'm looking to see if you guys can help me out. I am looking at getting a new speedboat, and I just need you Perfect. to sauce me some bones. Uh, sauce you some bones? Yeah. Is this for, like, is, are you heading out for a dinner? Uh, no, no, no. I'm looking at a speedboat. Oh, okay. So how will bones help 
What kind of speedboat is it, sir? Well, right now, I just don't have uh, what they say. Uh, my, my resources are not fluid. So I oh. just need... Oh, I don't know if you have an application. Oh, you're saying your bones are not currently sauced. I need... You need me to sauce your bones. I need... I need... <laughs> I'm pulling the plug. Okay. I'm out. <laughs> so, yes, I misunderstood that your bones weren't currently sauced and you needed me to sauce them. No, no problem, sir. I can get that I can get that taken care of. Sauce me some loans. End, end scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, I got to tell you something. Okay. Riddling is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question, requires a two-part overlapping answer, overlapping by syllable, word, or word. So, for example, last week when we did do the idiom Land of the Living, we left you with uh, this one. Where you dwell not dead, but get episode 237 scared out of you. Did you actually look it up, or did you even try? No, I got nothing. So it was Land of the Living. You want to take a, a guess? Tell, tell me one more time. Uh, where, you, where you dwell not dead, but get episode 237 scared out of you. Land of the Living on a Prayer. It's Bon Jovi. Oh, scared out of you. What do you get? The living what? Living Daylights. Of? Yeah, Land of the Living Daylights. Oh. So the answer is not Land of the Living. Land. The answer is not... Living daylights. The answer is land, land of the living daylights. Well, that makes that makes more sense. I need to get there. You know what? It's funny because it makes sense when you kind of like say it slowly to me, <laughs> like a child. What do you get scared out of you? The living poop. poop, poop. <laughs> okay, I got okay. a couple prepared. Yeah, I got a couple. Papa. Okay, here we go. This leg bone is a is mythological. To the this leg bone. Is a mythological aquatic woman. What? This leg bone oh. is a mythological with a, uh, a <laughs> mythological aquatic woman. That that has to be the femarial. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Femur mermaid. <laughs> yeah, it's a femur mermaid. Wow. <laughs> All right, I got one. It was actually. More impressive that oh, you came up man. with two. I did it again. What? Whenever we... I got nothing. I got no puzzles. I got no what? riddle links. Yeah. Man, I don't want to talk like, about it. The village of children. It's like every alternating episode we do, I look at my notes. I'm like, ah, I got some puzzles. And it's last week's notes. <laughs> so, I okay, here you go. It is said you're going here when you return to your maternal birthplace and wake up. See, it's last week's puzzle. I'm sad. Well, I do have one more. Let's let's save it for the village. It's a first time, I believe, for us. <sighs> What's a first time that I have nothing? This the nature of this riddling. Okay, we'll leave it dangling out there. Okay, tell okay. them how they can play along then. The legitimate childress. You can uh, send us a message on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom, or email us the village idiom podcast at gmail dot com, or whether it's the Facebooks, the YouTube, or the X at nice. three minutes gone. Okay. Okay. All the bones in your head make an emergency call. Uh, I got it. I love it. Say it again. All the bones in your head make an emergency call. I love it. Is that the first time? That's, that might be the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I and think that is, is three minutes gone. <laughs> yeah, that's I was great. Still like, that might be a th- that might be a first. Yep. Yep. High five. High five. Make no bones about it. It's first. Perfect. Well, it was. Uh, but I'm putting today's episode together. It was super, super fun. It's so fun. Make no it? bones about it. I'm Skinny. I'm Jurassic Park. And these are the Village Idioms. Make no bones about it. That's three minutes gone.